This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So hopefully you're happy with that concept of provisions for unrealised profits on inventory. Uh, a very minor part of the syllabus it is within there uh, and you very rarely see it. That doesn't mean to say you won't. Uh, so it's worthwhile just touching upon is a provision for unrealised profit, a PUP adjustment on PPE or a non-current asset. Because as well as selling inventory between the parent and the subsidiary or vice versa, uh, we could also transfer an asset. Uh, there could be a piece of machinery uh, that is currently within the parent's books. Uh, we need to transfer that into the subsidiary's books. So when we transfer it, like any sale of property, plant and equipment, there is likely to be a profit on sale. If we have that profit on sale, uh, that profit on sale is going to sit within the group account when we consolidate it, isn't it? Because whoever has made the profit uh, is recognising that profit in the individual accounts. The asset is unlikely to be sold on elsewhere. It's just going to be continually used within the books of where it has been transferred. So. Effectively, within the group accounts, we've artificially inflated the value of the asset. And we've artificially inflated the profits of the group. On an individual company basis, it's fine. We don't make any adjustments within the individual company basis. From a legal perspective, it's okay, okay to transfer an asset between one company and the other. But from a group accounts perspective, whereby we're looking at the single entity, we need to go through there and eliminate that profit, don't we? Okay, so... We do it in a very similar way to what we did with property, plant and equipment. Sorry, with inventory. Here's a question. What was the journal entry when we had an inventory provision for unrealised profit? What was it? What was the debit? What was the credit? Here it is. Flicking back through your notes. Like, oh, I can't remember. Uh, quickly look through your notes. Have you got it? Yes. We debit the retained earnings of the seller and we credited the inventory, didn't we? So reducing the value of the asset and reducing the profits through retained earnings. What's different when it comes to going through and looking at a provision for unrealised profits for a non-current asset or property, plant and equipment? Well, the first thing to note is that the credit does obviously not go to inventory. It goes to property, plant and equipment, doesn't it? So on the face of the consolidated statement of financial position, we reduce is it the, the property, plant and equipment? So it's 100% of P, 100% of S, and then we deduct any property, plant and equipment provision for unrealised profit. Uh, the other entry, remember, was a debit to the retained earnings. So it's a debit to the retained earnings of the seller. So again, if S is the seller, we are just working to, which is the net asset of the subsidiary. And again, that adjustment will be at the reporting date. And if the parent is the subsidiary, we adjust working five, which is the group retained earnings. That's it. So it's still a very similar journal entry. So we still process the debit to the same place uh, with re regards our retained earnings and either working two or working five. We just need to be careful with the credit because that credit goes to property, plant and equipment, clearly, because that's where the profit resides, isn't it? It's sat there within PPE. It's not sat within inventory. OK, uh, I put a very brief illustration there within the notes. So what have we got? It says a parent sold an item of PPE. So the parent company sold it. So immediately any profit is going to be adjusted, isn't it? Whereby if P is the seller, it's working five, isn't it? The group retained earnings. Uh, sold it for 250000 on the last day of the reporting period. The carrying value was two hundred, So there is therefore a profit. Because remember to work out your profit. It's your proceeds less carrying value isn't it okay uh, so what have we got uh, we need to credit the property plant and equipment with that profit is it there are 50,000 uh, so reducing the PPE by 50 so effectively you know it was transferred at 250 
So the subsidiary now holds it at 250, but that's fine in the individual accounts. In the group accounts, it needs to get back to the 200. So we reduce it down from 250 down to the 200. So reduce the PPE. And then we debit the retained earnings. So reduce the retained earnings, like we've said, in working five as the parent is the seller. Okay. Uh, as I say, that's very rarely been seen. It has been seen, uh, but it doesn't crop up as frequently as what you have your provisions for unrealized profit on inventory. But please just have an awareness of it just in case. If you find it difficult within the exam, that's great. You just move on. You leave it. It's only going to be one mark, maybe one and a half within the exam. So there's nothing too much to get concerned about, but just have a general awareness of it.